Shalom, giving all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Raka Kodash, for giving us the understanding of the Holy Bible through your men, beginning with the apostles and the bishops of Great Millstone. These are the men that are worthy of double honors in the time that we're living in. And we're living in some very prophetic times. As a matter of fact, we're living at the end of the world, according to Matthew 24 and verse 3 as well as 2nd Ezra 6 and verse 9, where it says Esau is the end of the world. Esau is who you would call so-called white people or the so-called Caucasian race, so-called Europeans. These are the false and pseudo identities that they go by because in actual fact, Esau or the Edomites, which they're still here to this very day, um, so-called white people as it were they're the descendants of Esau in the Bible All right, Esau the progenitor of the Edomites also known as the wicked in the Bible inherently and that's according to Malachi 1 and verse 4 um, it also says in 2nd Ezra 6 and verse 9 that Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. So we're living in a, a transitional period of time where our Lord, Yahweh Bashmah Shai, is going to remove one people out of power and set up another people in power. Okay, so the power of this world is going to go from Esau unto Jacob. Just as it's written when you go to the book of Daniel, chapter 2, and I believe that's verse 20. The Lord said, um, he removeth kings and setteth up kings. Okay, you've also got Psalms 75, and I believe that's verse 5 or 6. And then you've got um, Sirach 10 and verse 4. These are the scriptures that I'm just throwing out there that you can um, go to and read for yourself. I'm not going to go to every scripture that I quote for the sake of time. All right, just bear with me. It's also very early in the morning that I'm doing this video, so I'm not all the way, you know, um, sharp, as it were. I'm a little bit groggy, so just, um, you know, bear with me if this video is a little bit longer than usual. But anyway, that's the time frame that we're living in, and our so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans were the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel. Israel, who had 12 sons. And were the descendants of those 12 sons. Okay. Judah, Benjamin, Levi, um, Ephraim, Gad, Reuben, Simeon, Issachar, Naphtali, Zebulon, Asher, and who else am I missing? <laughs> um, Manasseh, okay. Were the descendants of the 12 patriarchs of Israel, our so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, collectively. And currently, we're being oppressed together out here in America, according to Bible prophecy, pursuant to Jeremiah 50 and verse 33, it speaks about how our people will be oppressed together, right? But not in ancient Babylon, but in modern day Babylon, which is America, which by the way, America is also known as Mystery Babylon the Great, in which America is set for destruction, okay, by way of thermonuclear fire thermonuclear missiles so we're living in some very prophetic times and with all that being said before I get into this lesson and this video I want to say Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai Bashem thumb to the 144,000 servants as well as the remaining elect of Israel because that's who our Lord is going to deliver and, and save from this common destruction that we're prophesying about. Okay. Anyway, this video that we're about to play, that I'm about to play for you, 
This was sent to me by a beloved brother, a very beloved brother of mine, across the pond. And he found it on TikTok and sent it to me. And he was wondering when this took place, um, you know, considering that I live in New York. So I guess he saw it and maybe thought I knew what this, um, I guess you can call it a protest. You know, he was just inquiring about when this, hap when this happened and what it was about. And um, my reply was that I wasn't actually sure that this even took place. Um, I remember on Saturday morning before camp, you know, I was running some errands in the city and I believe I was listening to the Apostles um, live stream from a few weeks ago on my earphones, on my AirPods. And it's spiritual because um, as I was listening to the Apostles, the Spirit had Apostle Gabar speaking about the tribe of Gad and their war cries. And as soon as he mentioned Gad, I looked up and in my peripheral, there were like three Gadite women um, standing at an ice cream truck, which I thought was, you know, very spiritual because literally as soon as he mentioned Gad, I looked up and I saw three Gadite women, right? Three so-called Native American women just standing there, which was very spiritual. Um, especially the, the fact that there was three of them. We know the number three is a spiritual number. You know, three pretty much represents and symbolizes understanding. Okay. So that was spiritual. So all in all, um, I believe this might have taken place on Saturday. Okay. This protest by uh, Gad in the city. Now, before I play this video, I'll just give you a brief synopsis here. You've got uh, Native Americans, so-called Native Americans. Right, but, and I say so-called because you so-called Native Americans are actually Hebrew Israelites from the tribe of Gad. Hebrew is our language. Israelite is our nationality and the Bible is our constitution. Anyway, here in this video, you're going to see so-called Native Americans um, on horses pretty much um, protesting against Esau okay and how he stole their land which is the land of North America um, which we know was a uh, Bible prophecy all right and they're riding through Manhattan Midtown Manhattan Okay, on the horses so that's what we're going to see in this video so without further ado i'm just going to press play ignorance do not be blind to your naiveness what you see is the truth it took all of this to prove to you that we are still here we are not going nowhere United States tried to erase our people, but we're still here. We need more than both sides. We're on the trail of truth. We're riding from San Francisco to DC. Respect us or expect us. Trail of truth. Bottom back. Three hundred fall tearing off political prisoners. Okay, we're moving. So that's the video right there. Um, I'm going to start by saying that our Heavenly Father, 
whose name is Yahweh, alongside his only begotten son, our Lord and Saviour, Yahweh Shai. They're putting a very spiritual spirit on Gad, so-called North American Indians. And the spirit that our Lord is putting upon our people, and in particular, the tribe of Gad, is the spirit of triumph and overcoming. Okay, which goes back to Genesis the 49th chapter and what our forefather Jacob um, told Gad okay, and his descendants and um, the latter days which the latter days is referring to the last days which we're living in right now right, concerning this particular age which I'll get that in a minute but the main way we're going to overcome um, this devil, this system, is through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashmael Shai. Okay. Uh, one scripture that comes to mind is Revelation, the 12th chapter. I believe it's around um, verse 11. It speaks about how, you know, they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. And by the word of their testimony, speaking about how the hopeful elect of Israel are going to overcome Esau, Edom, and this whole beast system through the great sacrifice that our Lord Yahweh Shai made for our people and our people only by shedding his blood, okay, which enabled us as a people to. Um, get back into the good graces of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. Us needing a high priest on high, that being Yahweh Shai. You read about that in Hebrews chapter 7. You've also got 1 Timothy 2 and verse 5, where it says about how our Lord, Yahweh Shai, is the mediator between us and the Heavenly Father. Okay, and again, by the, by the testimony of Yahweh Shai, that's how we're going to overcome Esau. And we know that the testimony of Yahweh Shai, according to Revelation 19 and 10, is what? The spirit of prophecy, which is what we have, especially us here at Great Millstone. That's our main um, focus, prophecy. And that's how we're going to overcome this devil, Esau, all right, by speaking the words of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai into existence which is what we do you know through the grace of our lord so i'll start by saying that um in which as a matter of fact we can start there let's start in the book of genesis chapter 49 and i believe gad is verse 19 but for the sake of context Let's read from verse um, verse 1. This is Genesis 49, verse 1. It says, And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. All right, so here, our forefather, Jacob, again, Jacob, whose name was changed, to Israel, becoming the progenitor of the Israelites. Um, here, he's gathering his sons, his 12 sons, um, and, and telling them what was going to go down in the last days. Okay, and also, I want to make mention that this is a very um, important chapter to read because it's you know, through this chapter that we get understanding on who the 12 tribes of Israel are today, all right? You know, basically through the Spirit, our Lord gives us um, clues as to who the Israelites are today. And I believe, um, you know, High Priest Ariar, through the Holy Spirit, was able to identify um, who the tribes are today using this particular chapter, as well as Deuteronomy, the 33rd chapter. And of course, we've got Deuteronomy 28 from verse 15 on down, 
concerning the curses that's also an identifying um, chapter you know it says in Romans 8 verse 16 the spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of the most high so you know it's through these various different chapters like I said Genesis 49 Deuteronomy 33 Deuteronomy 28 verse 15 on down we're able to pinpoint who the Israelites are today and what we've discovered is that our so-called Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans are the Hebrew Israelites, okay? The true Hebrew Israelites. The reason I say true is because you have um, a particular people right now that are claiming to be Jews, Israelis and whatnot, which is uh, one of the biggest lies on earth. I'm speaking about the people that's in our land today, right? That call themselves Jewish, Israelis. They're nothing but bastards, according to Zechariah 9 and verse 6, where it says, a bastard, as in an illegitimate child or children, shall um, dwell in Ashdod. Okay? And um, that's exactly what's playing out this very day where you have an, illeg an illegitimate people um, claiming to be the people of the Most High when they're not. But anyway, um, verse 2 says, Gather yourselves together and hear ye, sons of Jacob, and hearken unto Israel, your father. So basically, Jacob... Israel, you know, goes into the various different prophecies concerning, um, you know, his sons, our forefathers, the tribes, if you will, as it pertains to um, the last days, all right? Now, we're just going to go straight to the point, verse 19, yep, concerning Gad. As you see here, it says, Gad, a troop shall overcome him. Which the, the name Gad itself means troop. And the troop that overcame Gad, as it pertains to America, was Esau's American cavalry. Okay, he was responsible for stealing this land. North America from the tribe of Gad and not only Gad but from the tribe of Reuben and Issachar Reuben representing you so-called Seminole Indians Issachar representing you so-called Mexicans okay your land um, you know was stolen by the so-called white man who is Esau Edom in the Bible alright who is also identified as being the thief. And maybe I'll get that as well, according to um, John chapter 10 and verse 10. But anyway, again, Genesis 49 and 19, it says, Gad, a troop shall overcome him, but he shall overcome at the last. And, um, you know, this is the spirit that our Lord is putting upon Gad as it pertains to this video at least, where you have so-called Native Americans, Gadites, you know, pr pretty much uh, making their presence felt through Manhattan, okay? Which is spiritual because, you know, they um, rode past where we used to camp on, um, you know, 34th and 7th, you know, some years back. You know, which was, you know, a very um, spiritual place in, its, in itself. 34th and 7th, as you see here by Macy's. This is where we were for a few years. You know, prophesying on the behalf of Yahweh Bashem al Shai. Anyway. Um, 
let's go back to Genesis 49 and 19. Like I said, right now the Lord is putting the spirit upon, you know, Gad to stand firm. And that's what they, that's what they were doing in this video, you know, standing firm. I believe they were chanting, what do we want land? When do we want it now or something to that effect? And um, what you got to realize is that this land, which is your land, you know, the land of America, it is your land. However, America is about to be destroyed, right? So, you know, the pride that you have for this land is in vain because surely America is going to be destroyed. In the, in the time of World War Three, when World War Three heats up to a nuclear level, all these various different countries, um, the enemies of America, such as Russia, first and foremost, Iran, China, North Korea, and a host of other nations, even um, some of America's own allies, they're all going to shoot their nuclear missiles upon America, Babylon the Great, okay? Which is going to serve as punishment for what our enemy Esau, Edom, done unto our people, right? By stealing this land, again, from the tribe of Gad, Reuben, and Issachar as well as enslaving our people, beginning with the tribe of Judah, so-called African-Americans, so-called Negroes. Um, the destruction of America is gonna, sit, is gonna serve as punishment for what this so-called white man done unto our people, okay? Like I said, he stole this land from Gad, Reuben and Issachar and as I mentioned earlier, um, when we go here to the book of John, chapter 10 and verse 10, our Lord, through the Spirit, actually spoke about this man, Esau, Edom, the so-called white man, you know, through the Spirit. Okay, it says, the thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. Now, first and foremost, you know, reading this in its correct context, this was actually speaking about um, wicked Israelites, okay, at the time, you know, but through the Spirit, our Lord is speaking directly about Esau, the Edomites, you so-called white people, who stole the land of America, okay, through your American cavalry, you also stole the tribe of Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, the southern kingdom of Israel, if you will, from um, their respective lands, you know, during the 1500s, the 1600s, the 1700s, the 1800s. I'm talking about the transatlantic slave trade that took place where you stole our people from different parts of Europe, but primarily from the west coast of Africa, stole them and enslaved them out here in America, okay? Put them on cargo slave ships to build your kingdom by force, you know, which was very treacherous. So it says, the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. And that's exactly what this so-called white man, Esau Edom, has done unto our people. He's destroyed our people. And this is why our people right now are destitute as it pertains to the wisdom, knowledge and understanding of the Holy Bible. Hence, Hosea 4 and verse 6, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And that's mainly due to um, 
what Esau, Edom, the Edomites have done unto our people. And it's a known fact that this so-called white man, Esau, during hardcore slavery, beat our identity out of us as being Hebrew Israelites. Made us worship him as the Most High, which is where you get this image of so-called Jesus Christ from, which our people worship to this very day, which that image goes back to Cesare Borgia, and even further than that, it goes back to Serapis Christus, which is a false deity, again, which our people worship to this very day because of the so-called white man and his plantation Christianity. You know, he set up various different plantation Christian missionaries wherever we were scattered, be it on the west coast of Africa, you know, in places like Nigeria, which is why our people are all fucked up spiritually. All right. And then on these cargo slave ships, a lot of our people were actually speaking ancient Hebrew. He stripped us of our language, all right, forced us to speak his language, which if he was out here in North America, you know, during hardcore slavery, of course. You know, you went from speaking either ancient Hebrew or whatever dialect we were speaking on the west coast of Africa. You know, he forced you to speak English or if you was in places like the island of Hispaniola, which is divided between so-called Dominicans and Haitians, which is Simeon and Levi. You know, that island was conquered by the the French and the Spanish. So, you know, of course today you're going to have Haitians speaking French and you're going to have Dominicans speaking Spanish. And then he messed up our people through his pseudo-educational system, destroyed our people on a financial level. Again, taking our land, our resources, stealing our land and our resources, I should say. And this is why we're in the condition that we're in to this very day. Okay, a people robbed and spoiled as is written in Isaiah 42 and 22. Okay, he's completely and utterly conquered our people. That's why it says this here. When we go to Hosea chapter 8 verse 8, I believe. Yep, it says Israel is swallowed up. Okay, which is a metaphor um, to say that our people are conquered. And who conquered our people? Esau, all right, the so-called white man. It says, Israel is swallowed up. Now shall they be among the Gentiles, which are the heathen, all right? The natural Gentiles, that is, the other nations, as it were. Now shall they be among the Gentiles as a vessel wherein is no pleasure, okay? Pretty much our people are all fucked up, especially out here in America, Babylon the Great. You know, they're clueless as it pertains to the Bible. They're clueless as it pertains to our Lord, Yahweh Bash Baal Shai. You know, they're in various different religions, worshiping false gods and whatnot. You know, just completely and utterly destroyed. And right now, our Lord has no pleasure in two-thirds of our people out here in America. And that's according to Zechariah 13 and verse 8. That's why it says, two parts therein shall be cut off and die. Because two-thirds of our people ain't going to come to the realization that they're Israelites or they're going to refuse to adhere unto that that um that message you know they're going to carry on in their rebellious ways worshiping false gods and ultimately they're going to join themselves unto esau's beast system his new world order by taking his mark pursuant to revelation 13 and 16 the mark of the beast which is the implantable microchip okay and by doing so 
they're going to be destroyed because there's a great judgment for any of our people that uh, receive Esau's mark, the micro sea hip. And that judgment is going to come by way of thermonuclear fire pursuant to Revelation 14 verses 9 to 10. So this is what we're warning our people about. Anyway, point being is that our people are swallowed up. They're conquered, right, by Esau, Edom. So back in John chapter 10 and verse 10, it says, The thief cometh not but for to steal. He stole the land of America. He stole us as a people. He also stole um, our heritage, our identity, and our land, which that is our heritage, first and foremost, all right? The land of Israel. You know, that's um, the land that our Lord gave unto our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So it says, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Okay, so our Lord, Yahweh Shai, came on the scene to give us life, okay, and um, to give it to us in abundance. And that's what's happening right now, you know, with this truth because this truth is given life unto the elect of Israel, okay? The elect of Israel are no more spiritually dead. The elect of Israel have awoken to this truth. They've awoken to their true nationality. And more importantly, we've awoken unto who our Lord is, who our power is, that being Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Bahashem Rakakodash. Rakakodash pertaining to the Holy Spirit, okay, which feeds us with this great understanding. So, you know, truly our Lord has come and He's blessed us with this great knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of the Bible. You know, by feeding us this understanding through His men his pastors, um, according to Jeremiah 3 and verse 15, beginning with the apostles of Great Millstone on down. Okay. So, um, let me see what else we can take away from this video. I mean, that's all I pretty much wanted to say, but just showing you that our Lord is putting a particular spirit upon Gad right now, which aligns with uh, the prophecy of our forefather, Jacob, as we read Genesis 49 and 19. Gad, a troop shall overcome, but he shall overcome at the last. And primarily the elect of the tribe of Gad as is written, 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes of Israel um, are going to be servants, you know, on the behalf of our Lord, Yahweh Bashan al Shai. You know, they're going to be a part of this ministry, prophesying on the behalf of our Lord. They're going to be out there on the highways and byways doing this work. So. You know, that's who's going to truly overcome in these last days. All right. The 12,000 servants out of the 12 tribes of Israel, pursuant to Revelation chapter 7 and Revelation 14, and the remaining elect of Israel are also going to overcome and be delivered throughout the world according to Matthew 24 and verse 31. But the main salvation is going to take place out here in America. All right. Also known as Babylon the Great, also known as the land of the north. Jeremiah 16 verses 14 to 15. Just gonna 
say whatever comes to my mind. The first thing I'm going to say is, you fucking eat a mic, you're in a lot of goddamn trouble. Because you didn't just take any old nation and enslave them and um, put, this, put us under your feet. But you did it to sovereigns, the children of Israel. The Yasha, Yasha Allah, Yah meaning he, Shah meaning prince, which is royal, sovereign. Allah meaning power of God. We are the princes of God. And you enslaved us for a period of more than 400 years. So what in the fuck do you think you're going to get in return? You're going to get cold, fucked up. We're going to kick your ass. We're going to break you up. We're going to fuck you up. We're going to work you in the fields. We're going to work your ass every day. And you ain't going to get no fucking bread. You ain't going to have no shift, man. If we decide to make your motherfucking ass work two, three days straight, you going to do it, bitch. You going to do it. You motherfuckers. You got, that time is on our side, not your side, man. You can do whatever you want, but you better do it fucking quick. Because your time is up, man. 